All right, everybody, good afternoon. Um, hopefully everybody's got a packet that has our agenda for the day and everybody's signed in. Uh, thank you all for coming out. This is our second, looks like our second annual cross work group meeting. So um, basically what's going to happen right now, you guys are going to have a presentation. Um, this is Juan Milan, Juan Millan. Uh, he's a labor market uh, researcher from the Employment Development Department. And I met him at uh, one of the workforce meetings um, this past year. And uh, we talked, and I knew he was a researcher, and he did presentations. I said, oh my god, we got, I got to get you out to the consortium to do a presentation for us. And so the idea is that uh, labor market projections should drive a lot of what we do, especially on the career technical education side of the house for all of our um, adult schools and the college for the School of Continuing Ed short-term vocational training, is that uh, when we are planning our programs or deciding our programs, that as a leader, uh, as leaders, we're supposed to look at the labor market information uh, data for our community to say where those jobs are. But what are the long-term projections? And then we're also supposed to look at that information to say what kind of trainings are we doing that, that may, it may be time to sunset those programs. You know, sometimes we're training people and there aren't really jobs in our local community. Or what we're training for, those people may have to move or uh, commute or relocate to other areas in the state where the state says there's a high projection but actually regionally those jobs are not in a 50 mile radius <coughs> of where we are. And so those are, those are some things that I think as a, a conscientious administrator that we have to look at. Now you as all, our, all of our work group leaders in the consortium, the idea here is that you would see this, see this information, listen to it, and you can better inform your students, no matter what level they are, the ESL, basic ed, high school diploma, equivalency, on the academic side, part of that is, is, is career driven. They want to earn more money. And that uh, there's earnings tied to their levels of literacy. That if uh, a person is, uh, achieves a significant level of literacy, they can earn at least uh, five to $7,000 a year more than a person of low literacy. A high school diploma, over a non-high school diploma, earns on average how much per year? Somebody knows, throw me a number. Three, two, one. $10,000 a year, uh, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And so there's that chart. Some people have it up. They have that earnings chart by education. And that a uh, student who gets vocational training or short-term uh, career tech ed training can earn on average about $8,000 a year more than a person who does not have training. So um, I'm telling you those numbers because I'm incorporating them into my talks. When I talk to people about what we do, what's the value, what's the return on investment for adult education, dollars and earnings and tax revenue, contributing citizens. And so we need to know where those jobs are, what the projections are. Maybe it'll pique your appetites, my leaders who are here today, what kind of trainings you can offer based on this information. And when you write that information, you write grants and anything for the state, they want to see that you tapped into labor market data. And Juan and I were just talking about uh, DLS was tapping back into their local data that they research and you provide to the feds. On They provide the feds to the data on our labor market projections. So you're, you're getting it from the source today. So um, I want to open it up. Um, if you have questions as we get towards the end of his hour, um, please ask them. Um, I think this is the start of a very strong relationship with EDD and labor market projections. And he's based locally here in Covina, West Covina. West Covina by the West Covina EDD office on uh, Windor. Windor. So very, very accessible to us and excited about partnering with local educators. Okay. And so we are the educators and trainings of this population. So. Um, Right now, I'm going to turn over to Juan, let him introduce himself, and um, let's let it rip. Hi, Jordan. My name is Paul. I'm with the State of California's Labor Market Information Division. I've been working for the state for about 15 years. 13 of those years have been in, with the Labor Market Information Division. 
I know that you know what LMI is, but what we're, what we're going to do today is we're going to take it one step further or clarify any misconceptions about what we have and of how LMI can come into play in, the, in our workplace and our uses. So what we're going to do today is we have an agenda. We're going to define labor market information and see how people, our different users, are using labor market information and applying it. It's not just educators. It's not just government agencies. But there are a lot of different users of LMI. We're going to see how they're using it and applying the LMI. Then I'm going to introduce you to the LMI website. By the way, if you have a smartphone or a laptop in front of you, feel free to go into the website as I'm giving the presentation so you can see that what I'm talking about is actually quite interactive. We're going to see how the LMI website works for educators and researchers. It's actually customized to meet your needs. We've surveyed educators and trainers throughout the state of California, and we asked them, what kind of LMI is most useful for you? Based on those responses, we've customized an LMI page just for you. <coughs> Every time you go into the LMI website, click on educators and trainers, you can see what all the other educators and trainers throughout California are using and tapping into. Now, it's very different because, as we know, California is a very diverse state. Once we understand and we've defined LMI and its different uses, we're going to see, we're going to take a look at the local labor market. What's going on in our local labor markets? How will our students dwell in this economy? What's the situation for our kids countywide? Or how about saying the San Diego Valley? It's so large. The San Diego Valley alone is just about one, one third of the entire county of Los Angeles. It's a lot of people. It's a lot of jobs. It's a big economy. It's a large labor market. And when Ryan was asking me, where are the jobs? Where are the jobs? We're going to go over some occupational and industry projections. If we know where the industries that are growing are, or what industries are growing, and just how much they're growing, then we know that that's where the jobs are. Well, that's the theory, right? We're going to see if that's actually true. There's industry projections, and following that, there are occupational projections. If there's a growing industry, all the occupations associated with our industry will grow with that industry. But growth, in terms of industry, can fall into two, two categories, employment growth or financial growth. This day and age, we have many more tiny million dollar operations that just employ four or five individuals. Isn't that true? I'm going to share some data today that's going to show you. It's going to show you how we live in a very dynamic and modern economy. And the more you delve into it, the more complex it can get. But I'm not going to complicate it for you. I'm going to make it easy for you. We're going to see how LMI is so helpful. So what is labor market information? Labor market information is any type of data that's going to connect employers with job seekers. It could be researching a firm online. It could be wages. It can be occupations. It has different uses. There's statistical LMI. And then there's qualitative LMI, just knowing about the websites and, what, and, and how to navigate through the, through the computer. And then there's a statistical LMI, where you get the actual numbers. And I need to make, I need to make decisions based on the numbers, and that's what I'm going to get to. These handouts here, I'm going to be, I'm going to be passing them out as I go. So if you don't have them all, just okay, I'll get them to you. One of the things about the labor market information that, division is that the numbers that we put out are neutral. There will be many think tanks out there. You will hear an analyst in the radio saying, well, the unemployment rate is a lot higher, and these are the numbers, and they may be correct. But I need you to understand, to understand that when you're dealing with the LMI numbers, you're dealing with score, the basic score, no analysis. We're just giving you the score. I'm not an elected official. I'm here to give you the numbers. And people are saying, oh, that's not true. The unemployment rate's really high, et cetera, et cetera. No, that's not really the case. No. We collect the data. We have survey data. We have tax data. And we're just making it available. It's neutral data. We will have the LAEDC analyze our data, reproduce it, create a report, and give their own analysis give their own employment projections, which are always much higher and much greater and much rosier than the ones that the state puts up, because we are not in the business of cheering any, any, anybody on. If the unemployment rate goes up, it goes up. If it goes down, it goes down. We're just keeping the score. We are the official scorekeepers of the unemployment rate, of wages, and industry and employment. Let's take a look at 
to look at the way educators and trainers are using our mind. Ask yourself, am I using our mind for these purposes? Occupational guides and profiles. How many of you are familiar with occupational guides and profiles? They're really good. We have the profiles, which is the, the summary of the occupa uh, occupational profile, and then the guides, which are just much more detailed and get detailed information. Wages and projections and employment. That's very important. I'm not going to spend the next two years of my life training for a job that has that shows very little security in the future, or that has declining wages. Ideally, you want high growth, high wage occupations, right? But what do you tell the student who wants to become an astronaut? What do you tell the student who wants to be a nuclear engineer where there are only 10 openings a year, or just five openings a year? You don't tell them that you cannot pursue that. You just know that the labor market conditions for that position are just much more competitive. Your dream is not shattered. Just know that LMI is laying out the playing field for you. Yeah, many different things. Employers, job seekers, career planning. Now, many of our students think they know what they're doing or think they know what they want. Then two years or one year into the study, I don't really like this. In the LMI website for job seekers, we have some incredibly helpful career exploration tools, which I'm going to link you to, and you're going to, you're going to be familiar with them. Okay. This is our LMI website. How many of us are familiar with this website? It's a really good website. This is where you gather the data. Sometimes you go into a website and it's information overload. Where do I start? Do you remember the very first slide I told you that this website is customized to the needs of educators and trainers. When you come to the website, click on the link that says educators and trainers. Labormarketinfo.edd.ca.gov. Once you click on that link, then this web page is going to customize itself to your needs. You're going to have a drop down box. You're going to see occupational guides and profiles, LMI data for all this is for educators, by the way. Student assistance research. If you have a student who needs help, we're not in a living encyclopedia. Yeah, there are some resources for students. Click in there, and you can see the available resources that are out there for the student next time they come and sit down for counseling. Training programs. This is all on the LMI page for educators. Now, if you click in LMI for educators, you're going to get fastest growing jobs, employment projections, which, by the way, if you click on that link, you're going to get the actual sheet. Let's take a look at how that works. And you see how in the two clicks of a button, I'm already in the heart of some very good data that's going to help me. Two clicks of a button. No one here needs to be a pro in, in high tech. So once I click on these links, I start getting different type of information. So what I have here, because I know that navigating through a website is, is just, you know, you've got to take a course sometimes. It's just, it just consumes and it takes up a lot of your time. I've created LMI Quick Links for educators and researchers. How many of you do need, how many of you need this one? This has no value. It's an electronic tool, but what I'm doing is I want you to see it. I want you to see what's in there. It's going to define the quick links. It's going to define whatever area of information you may need. You say, oh yeah, I need projections. You click on the project projections link, and it will take you to all the projections for LA County. And then the quick links sheet will probably say, I need the local unemployment rates. And then it'll give you the unemployment rates you know, for your local area. You just click on the links. It's an electronic tool. Ryan, you've already got it. It's your job to send that tool to everyone in this room. And it's your job to save that tool and save it to your desktop so that when you're on your computer and you need to help out something, you just click it to the quick link. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at for. Rates, industry projections, wages. And it's just a clickable button. You don't have to navigate through these incredible websites. Now, how many of you have the LA County scorecard? If you do not have it, I have a few left here. Who needs it? Pass it on in that direction. The LA County scorecard, we, I put the scorecard on every single month. Do, are we all out of copies? Well, we're out. I had a hundred out of some. I made 25 copies. Now, in the LA County scorecard, and I will make more copies for you, by the way, in the back side, there's going to be a definition of the different types of unemployment rates. And I want to clarify that, really. I sit down and I give presentations and I sit there and people walk out of the room and say, the unemployment rate really isn't as high as it's supposed to be, as they say it is. 
and people have a right to say that, but the truth is that they don't understand how we're putting out and gathering the unemployment rate. The official unemployment rate for Los Angeles County is the U3 measure. We have six different measures for unemployment, and this is across the United States, by the way. We have the U1 through the U6. The official unemployment rate, the one that we get quoted on, that I put out every month, is the U3. This is everyone who's been unemployed for less than four weeks. Have you been looking for work? And it's, by the way, the, un the, the unemployment rate is pulled through household surveys. Unemployment insurance claims have nothing to do with calculating this rate. Because not everybody who is unemployed is receiving unemployment insurance. However, the number of unemployment insurance claims is an indicator. For sure it means something. We have more unemployment insurance claims this week than last week. That's telling us something, right? But what we're following is the U3. The U3 is the official unemployment rate. And when sometimes politicians will quote this number and compare it to this number, and, and they're just twisting the data. We gotta be careful. We gotta know what we're looking at. So you can take it for granted. Whenever the unemployment rate is being mentioned, this is the number that we're talking about. When they say the unemployment rate is really 25% in this outlandish number, I don't have the data to prove it. They're probably talking about the U6. The U6 is all the unemployed people, plus those individuals who are marginally employed or discouraged. A marginally employed person could be a person who's working part-time and they really want to work full-time, or they're working in a, an industry that they'd really not be, rather be working on, or they'd really, really be making more money, rather, they would rather be making more money, or maybe a housewife. He's watching her kids, but when the right job comes along, I'll take that job and I'll jump into the love. And I'll, I'll be willing to work. Or a student who's in school, but if a good paying job comes, I'll job school and I'll go on them. Those people are working, or they're marginally employed or discouraged workers, but they're counted in here in the survey. You see, when you count those individuals who are kind of working part time, and, and the, the unemployment rate is going to go a lot higher. So, in that back sheet of the LA County scorecard, there is a line graph, and in that line graph, I I highlight the U6 and the U3. Whenever these two unemployment rates come closer together, that's a good thing. That means that all these people who are part-timers, marginally employed, and are jumping into the, and getting real jobs. Whenever the, the distance between the U6 and the U3 gets further apart, that's a bad sign for us, that our economic development and workforce development, because that means that there are a lot of unhappy workers out there. So every time I put up, my job every month is to put out the unemployment rate. I put out the official unemployment rate for Los Angeles County every third Friday of the month. And I get to the media and I get calls from the media and they ask me, Juan, did it go up or did it go down? Where did we get jobs? Where did we lose them? Et cetera, et cetera. And I answer, just very neutrally answer questions for them. Now, when people tell me the unemployment rate is not really where it is, it's not reflective of what's going on, all, let's take a, look at, take a look at the unemployment rate on a month over basis from the year 2000 to present. The shaded area represents the Great Recession. You're gonna note what happened to the unemployment rate during the Great Recession, the household survey. These were the responses. The unemployment rate skyrocketed from 4.7 all the way to 12.6. Interesting, and I think you would be interested in knowing this. Why is it that the recession ended in June of 2009, yet the unemployment rate kept on going high? Does anyone have an answer? Because even if employers were already in the green, and even if the recession was officially over, during this period, for all those employers who struggle to stay on top of the ball game, they learn how to maximize the production of the workers, the computers, technical abilities, and they made the workers wear many hats, wear very, wear very many hats in the workplace, and guess what? They didn't have to re-employ all those people. <laughs> It really didn't. I and mean, you think about automation, and you think you factor in automation, the outsourcing, or even the companies that are coming back to bring their, their machines over here, they're not making it. The unemployment rate didn't start going down and correcting itself until other industries started growing, not those traditional industries like manufacturing and, and uh, the unemployment rate slowly over a course of about six years finally we're bottoming out. If you look at the unemployment rate, in January of 2007 we were at 4.4, 4.7 prior to the recession. 
Now, I think that this is not a true unemployment rate because if you remember, prior to the bubble expansion, everybody was working. Because everybody was getting, or during the bubble, everyone was, had jobs. Everyone was getting hired. All these, 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 uh, these loans that were out there. People were opening up business, carrying money, building houses, developing. The unemployment, this is an artificial unemployment rate. I don't think that was naturally low. This is more like a normal unemployment rate. And look where we're at now. So in terms of jobs, we're doing okay. The recession is over. But it's not about the jobs. Not always about the jobs. It's also about the wages. So we know that the jobs are there. All right? So let's look at Los Angeles County annual, annual average unemployment rate and wages. So in 2016, over the year, we averaged out down at a 5.2 unemployment rate. And the wages are slowly going up. But now, let me ask you a question. It's not hard. Are the wages going up at a faster rate than the unemployment rate is going down? No. No, no the wages are not going up very much. Then it's flat. We're talking about 800 bucks here. An average wage. Another thing about Los Angeles County is that there are a lot of men, there are more millionaires than billionaires in LA County probably than anywhere else in the United States. And that's skewing the wages too. Are, are our people really working that, making that an average for one job? Mm -hmm. It's the wage, not a household income. Mm -hmm. So that's skewing the numbers too. Wages are not there. And the reason why is because of the industry makeup. We're going to start going into the industries. But before you do that, this is the unemployment rate and the way that the labor markets are looking in our local area, looking like in our local area. I learned when I went into my websites that the San Gabriel Valley is now being dissected into three sections. East San Gabriel Valley, South San Gabriel Valley, and Upper San Gabriel Valley. I did hand out some of these, if you didn't get one. This will outline the cities that are in the east, the cities that are in the west, or in the south, and the cities that are associated with, so you can know which cities are yours. Now we're taking, talking about three unemployment rates, 4.3, 3.6 for the Southwest, and the Upper San Gabriel Valley is 3.8. If you take a look at the list, the East San Gabriel Valley, Azusa, Irwindale, Glendale, Glendora, Bowdoin Park, Citrus, Covina, we have about 15 cities in that list. Southwest San Gabriel Valley would be Alhambra, Monterey Park, Montebello, Rosemead. And then we have the Upper San Gabriel Valley, which is more like the Pasadena area, Sierra Madre, Monrovia, Arcadia, Temple City. One thing I'd like to point out, I want to go start getting into the projections in the industries really quick, is sometimes the unemployment rate will go up or down for the right or wrong reasons. Just because the unemployment rate went down, that may not necessarily be a good thing. Because the unemployment rate is a formula. For those of you who know math, who like math, it's the labor force divided by the unemployed, this, this number divided by this will give you a percentage, and that's the unemployment rate. Now, remember that survey that I told you that, that we call every month, and we find out, and we ask people are they working or not? They close in the truck of each month, and we publish them a week and a half later. Now, in that survey, sometimes we were able to estimate how many people are in your local labor force, right? Here's where the formula came in. If a person has been out of work, or they just just given up. You say, you know what I want, or you know what, EDD or survey, I'm not looking for a job. I'm just giving up. I'm going to wait till next year. I'm going to watch my baby while my wife works. So that person is no longer content in the labor force, this overall size of the labor force. So this number would shrink. Now, what happens if that starts happening across the board? You have husbands, wives, cousins. Everyone just starts dropping out of the labor force. And then all of a sudden, the unemployment rate will go down because it seems like a larger percentage of people are working than, than the total, but it's not. It's just that these, this number is dropping down. When the labor force reduces in size, that's bad news because investor the, the health of an economy is based on investor confidence. And investor confidence is very based on worker confidence. If workers believe that there are jobs out there and they have confidence in the economy, they're going to go out there and look. They don't believe that the economy is doing good, they just take a vaccine and not participate. 
and they don't participate. That's a bad thing. We need, to, especially that we know that populations are growing, these labor force numbers always have to be continuously growing. So be aware, sometimes the unemployment rate will go up or down for the right or wrong reasons. Just be aware of that. When the unemployment rate goes down and you ask yourself, because we're pros, we listen to the music, the situation's not really getting much better. How could the unemployment rate go down? It very likely is that a lot of people dropped out of the labor force based on this formula. Very likely is that. And that happens. Right now, the good news is that the labor force for Los Angeles County is at all time highs. We have more than 4.9 million people in the labor force right now for Los Angeles County. So I put up the unemployment rate and I said, I see, I, okay, the unemployment rate went down over the month. So the very first question the media asked me, okay, Juan, it went down over the month. What industries gain jobs and what industries lost jobs over the month? That's what they're asking. But for us, we need to know what is Los Angeles County looking like now? The majority of our jobs are in healthcare and social assistance. The annual average industry employment for Los Angeles County was over 644,000 in healthcare and educational service. Now, when I'm talking about educational service, I'm talking about private education. Where, do, where does public education fall? Good question. Under local government. Look at how large local government is. Local government. We're talking about 438,000 individuals in Los Angeles County working in local government. I guarantee you 90% of that sub-industry is in local government education. Let's go down the road. Local government education, state government, and federal government. Other services, what is that industry? It employs 153,000 individuals. What is the other services industry? This is an industry that's been created to help small businesses. They have uh, cleaning for restrooms and warehouses, um, tow trucks, dry cleaners. You find other services that are classified in there. Accommodation and food services, restaurants and hotels. LA County is a hub. A lot of people like to come to LA, and we like to get out a lot. Recreation, arts and recreation, healthcare, social system, we talk about that. This is an important industry. Do you notice that? I kind of group the colors together. That's because what we're looking at here is the sec industry sectors, not the major categories. So this would be one industry. This is an industry in itself. The light blue ones would be one industry that they group together in terms of numbers. So when we put out the numbers, like for example, accommodation and food services would be arts, entertainment, and recreation. And people say, well, what portion of that is restaurants? What portion of that is hotels? And that's why I'm giving you the breakout. Admins, this is a very, this CV3, employment agencies, corporate offices, and scientific and technical, we're talking about, these are the computer jobs. All those computer and technical jobs are classified under professional, scientific, and technical services. Right now, I'm just giving you the standing. We're going to look at how much growth these industries are, are experiencing. Then we have financial activities. Financial activities is broken out into two real estate and leasing and rental leasing and finance and insurance. These industries are high, high wage industries. They pay very good. The information industry is a very important industry in Los Angeles County. It's actually quite significant. Does anybody know what's in the information industry? It used to be magazines and newspapers. Social media? Now it's television stations broadcasts, movie productions, documentaries. This is all in Burbank. <laughs> yeah. All that whole area of Burbank, the ABC studios, the Walt Disney studios, right after 134, like all that area that you see. That's the information industry. These wages are extremely high. They pay very well. But it's a hard industry to get into. It's one of those industries where we've got to break the myth. There was this who you know to get in. And yeah, there's some truth to that. But if we're producing competent, talented, able innovators, then they're going to break in the industry and start making the changes that we need to. We need to get our local kids into these jobs. Because a lot of people who work in this industry live in Benton. Or on the west side. But the very high paying jobs, directors, actors, those technical, um, peripheral, I don't even know if they're technical, but I have the job. It's a very good industry, paying very good. Now, 
talk about the automation and the innovation and what's going on. And we talk, we've read articles about the retail trade fallout, yet you're still seeing the seasonal hiring going on. What's happening? This article's coming in, the retail trade's dying, Macy's is closing left and right. Then Macy's announces that they're going to hire like 800 people out there. And you hear all these articles about the death of retail trade and, and the ripple effect that's ha having on all those malls. And, and the, but this industry hasn't shown any decline. Trade, transportation, utilities is broken down into three sectors. Retail trade, look at how large retail trade is in terms of employment. Wholesale trade and transportation and warehousing. So I went to the Anderson forecast three months ago in UCLA and they were talking about this and they said, overall the numbers for this industry, TTNU, they're there, but there's been a big shift. A lot of these jobs right here in retail trade are moving over to where? To transportation and warehousing. And we know what's going on. It's all online shopping. Right? I've done all my Christmas shopping. I did most of my Christmas shopping in two hours. Mm -hmm. okay, the cyber sale, and I got that 35% discount. And it's all being mailed to my house. Right now. And everyone in the block is doing that. And you walk into, I went to the mall the other day, and. The section when returns online, returns is longer than any other section, right? This is real. And they're only hiring the whole floor. They only have two cash registers open for those who are not buying online. It's happening. But the jobs are shifting. Now, here's another problem with automation in, in the warehousing industry. Google has opened up a large warehousing industry out there. And I believe it's in Marina Del Rey. It's automated. It's acres large warehouse. And You've seen it on TV, you have these machines going up and down the warehouse, pulling, pulling the products and shipping them out. It's becoming very automated. Not only are the warehouses becoming automated, security, security operations are becoming automated. I was in Sacramento last month and I talked, spoke with somebody who's running a security company with drones. Mm -hmm. a drone just circling around and they had one security job, security guard in the room. And he showed me, because this is new, and it's, it's, really, it's really saving a lot of money. It's really effective. And you know, they, do all, they can do all that. If you take it to the next level, they're doing the face description analysis. It's not there yet. But he showed me what they're doing. And he had a sample, and there was a drone walking around, you know, monitoring a parking lot. And then they showed this guy trying to steal a car, and the drone would flash a light on him, and the guy would run. Security guards, which is such a big industry, so many jobs. That's going to be impacted by this too. Job agencies, employment agencies, they're doing a lot of hiring. Look at a large this administrative and support waste services right here. This is where employment agencies are, and they hire across the board. Manufacturing. Manufacturing has some of the solid, most better wages in LA County. They're union represented. Good jobs. And we're still here. Look at LA County. LA County is probably, I mean manufacturing. Manufacturing is probably the fifth largest or the sixth largest industry in this chart. That's here in LA County. These are union jobs. These are good paying jobs. We cannot lose them. But what are the jobs? What kind of manufacturing? I can't go over every 